Hey guys, I bet you have never seen this before. Why? Because we just built it last night and I threw it together on this car. Anyways, this week is gonna be really fun. I'm Harry and this is Studio Hot Rods and we build some of the coolest cars on the planet. And I'm an inventor by trade and I invent a lot of cool stuff. You see this little gadget right here? This is a gap tool. It's made for measuring the gaps. Now, if you follow my channel and you know who I am, you might have already got one of these because I'm offering them up for free. And this week I'm doing it again. They are really cool. All you gotta do is click the link, send your information, and I'm gonna send you one of these, pay the freight and everything, get it to you. Why am I doing it? Because I'm betting on you. That's right. I'm actually gonna send you that thing. I think you're gonna know that it's so cool and so much fun and so utilitarian. You're gonna actually use it on your cars and you're gonna go, wow, this guy makes cool stuff. It's gonna be fun. Anyways, this week, I am working on my supercharger cover with an integrated catch cam, but I gotta get to figuring out exactly how it's all gonna play together. So, this week's gonna be really fun. Like, subscribe, follow along. You're not gonna wanna miss the innovation and the creativity that we got going on right here, right on this channel. All right, so here's the problem I'm trying to solve, right? This is the old style positive crankcase ventilation strategy. This came off of a 1969, actually came off of my cool 1969 Chevelle with the big block in it. But what happens here is you're actually porting into this area here to collect the extra oil so it doesn't just blow off into the atmosphere and it doesn't go back into your engine and make your plugs foul and nasty and whatnot. So this is old school technology. They still sell this, this is a company called Evil, Dr. Evil Energy. <laughs> Not a big fan of evil anything. Anyways, um, this catch can is another piece and it's vented out to the top. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the OEM. I think that the people at General Motors and the engineers there are absolutely brilliant. This pump assembly actually came off of this motor. And if you look up close at the motor, you can see we have a Wagner pulley system up front. So that means your compressor for your air conditioning, your alternator, and all the components that actually run on the front end of this running gear at the front of the motor are actually custom made by a company called Wagner. Love it, really nice products. So anyways, when you pull off this original pump, right, you gotta replace it here. Now the problem is the catch can that's integrated by General Motors, by AC Delco, is actually mounted to the pump that we have removed. Therein lies the problem, right? So going back to look at what we printed, and I'll show you how we make this whole system and this whole setup using 3D printing as a FDM, a fusion disposition modeling. Anyways, see that catch can I mounted on the firewall? I wanted a clean firewall, but that thing hanging back there was driving me absolutely batty. It was driving me nuts because I can't stand it when the engine compartments are not clean and you're taking old technology and venting it out. I'm committed to actually doing it the right way and I think that we're gonna find some really cool stuff. What we're gonna do so we're actually going to take this bad boy apart, right? Let me get this going. And then we're going to cut it apart. And I want to see what kind of ventilation actually happens in this device. You know, do they have porting in it? There's three hoses up on top that I can show you. Anyways, one more. Take this off and then what we'll do is we'll take it back to the bench. And we're going to actually just saw it in half. Again, what I'm looking for is the ventilation porting inside the OEM's catch can. Is there any magic? Is there anything special? I don't even know. I want to cut it apart so we can find out together. <laughs> the guy that runs the uh, hot rod shop for me and back and schedules all the materials and he's like, did you cut it open yet? Did you cut it open yet? We're kind of excited to see actually like what's inside of here. Is there gold? Is there money? Is it a present? It's almost there. All right. Get this bad boy apart. I say bad boy too much. Let me just show you a couple things that are on here, right? And we sell these. If you guys need an OEM water pump, <laughs> let me know. Okay, here is the catch can assembly itself. Look how thin that is. You can see it's glued together. And then at the bottom here, this is the port that actually goes down to the oil pan to drain it back into it. Now I'm not gonna be able to probably integrate that where I'll probably have to integrate a drain similar to what you do here or here, creating a little bit more of a maintenance issue, but let's cut this thing apart see what's inside. All right, guys, this is definitely not supposed to ever come apart. <laughs> they probably fusion welded this thing together and it is stuck good. Anyways, I'll just keep chowing on it and pull it and rip it and 
tug on it and cut it, make a mess, and actually just have some fun. I wonder what's inside. I can't wait till I see it. Ah, that was a pain. <laughs> uh huh. Guys, what do you think is going to be inside there? You think it's going to be a maze? You think there's going to be like a check valve? There's going to be something else holding it all together? Let's see. Here, I'll see first. Hold on. Oh, wait. Oh. What do you think? What do you think's inside of here? I'm very amazed. Pretty much nothing. <laughs> this is the two ports that come in from your crankcase, from the top of your uh, valve covers. And this goes to a vacuum port, but not like the traditional vacuum port you would be thinking of. This goes all the way up to like the air box in a Corvette or a Camaro or a Denali, whatever you got going in with the LS or with the LT4. Anyways, but that just keeps it from getting oil because as this drains out, you can see it goes out the bottom right there, back down to the oil pan. But this is a pretty simple device. I guess now we know. All right, let's get to dig it in on the prototype now that we got. I'll show you in the car. It's really cool. It's like extremely simple. If you knew that already, why are you watching? All right, come on, let's go. <laughs> All right, back to my 3D printed part that I printed last night. I'm going for the coolest design I can make on it, and the only way you can do something like that relatively quickly is if you have a 3D printer, right? So, but now we understand what we're trying to do. Huh. We can make modifications, and I'm gonna walk you guys through the modifications and how we go about making them from here. Isn't that cool? It's so fun. I got an engineer that works with me named Kyle. Hey, Kyle! There, I call him the stair fairy. He's really fast on the stairs. <laughs> Kyle's really fast down the stairs. Um, okay, check it out, dude. I cut that apart, right? And it's obviously really simple. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing in it. Except this little wall here. Uh-huh. Probably just to stop it from splashing oil or something. Um, when we put this in there, I noticed this thing's a little bit, it's obviously too big. So what I want you to do is just skinny it way up. I mean, this thing, you know why it's a shape? Because that's probably the hole they yeah. <laughs> can put it in, right? I don't think volume matters. Way smaller than I thought. I know, me it's, too. It's real skinny in here. I know. I, I'm surprisingly small. So, but let's skinny this up. And I can't have this coming out that way. I really need a real pepcock, but we can put this on the next prototype for now. Let's just put it to the side. You know, and these, I like them. We came in high. That was good. And I'm thinking just run these down. And then run this one with a maybe a 90 at the end of it. I don't know. You'll have to figure out how to print it, how to make it. Yeah. I'll be excited to see what he does. <laughs> it's very cool. And then I'm just gonna have some type of splash guard there. Just on this this one here. Yeah. Yeah, because these are just vented down yep. here. But basically you know how that works. And then I'm gonna have to tie another port into our cold air intake or into the LT4 transition into here. Cause I don't want the high vacuum, you know, because yeah. off of here, off of this port that's behind the throttle body. So it's got a lot of, it's got a lot of vacuum right here. This is where you can run a brake booster from. And I know you know this, Kyle, already, but I'm just telling people that are watching it. This is where we will port to go to the brake booster right behind there. But that's way too much vacuum. If this thing would crush, <laughs> you know, it'd be sucking really hard on it. But that's why we're going to put a passive vacuum port either here. I can put it here. We can put it here. I don't know. We'll figure it out as we go, but let's get this thing designed in place and then we'll go to the final plumbing. <laughs> what do you think, split it in half or end here? Eh, I don't care. Honestly, use your, you know, when you're looking at it from a design perspective, material, print time, you use your better judgment. Okay. I'm good, it could be, dude. Yeah, I know. If you wanna know what the volume is of this, I'll take a cup of water, pour it in there for you and then dump it out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really care. All right, you get to hopping on that. I'm gonna keep playing with this one because did I show you my Band-Aids I put in your print? These were my Band-Aids to go. Beautiful. <laughs> Hello. I don't know, I gotta, I gotta get back to this. Thanks, Kyle. Mm -hmm. Now that we got Kyle back to doing the engineering stuff, let me explain to you my vision of the hot rod shop when I started it. I used to have a machine shop. I've done 3D printing since 2008, but I knew if we could integrate really cool ideas into these old vintage cars, we'd have something really, really special. And I would encourage any of you guys you can do some of this printing at home. If you want to get a home printer, you can get a home printer. There's lots of files online. You can print cool stuff. The problem is when you get the specialty stuff, you actually need an engineer. You need somebody that actually 
can take the concept and put it into a file that you can actually print and make something. I'm sitting here looking at my car and I'm like, man, I was counting up how many parts on this car are actually printed. It's actually pretty crazy. There's about eight different components that go just into the cold air induction system. This has a little scoop under here that brings cold air up. It's a printed ring, it's an interface. This whole piece that holds the Corvette filter, we printed this piece for it right here, and that's just in this one assembly. There is about, I'm gonna say 40 to 50 printed parts on this car that we designed and built right here. Isn't that crazy? But it takes it to a whole nother level. I always wanted to put something like this on there, but not gonna happen. You guys have seen my console. This is what I call the Wave. This is the one that holds the digital interface to be able to give the reverse camera and all that stuff. Guess how we made it work? The 3D printer. Speaking of the 3D printer, let me show you exactly how we fast track a part through the process. And I'm gonna do it pretty quick for you, but you're gonna come out the other side a lot smarter about how 3D printers actually work and how you might wanna use it at your place or your house. Come on, let's check it out. Let's start with the camera. Okay, the first thing we do is we start with what it is that we gotta mount our 3D printed part two. So the idea, the concept we have is, I wanna build something that's really beautiful, shiny, cool looking, integrates the catch can into the back of it, but you gotta start with like a camera like this. This is a 3D, scan, a 3D printer scanner camera, right? It's called Revo Point. you can buy them online. And here's what I did, I scanned that motor, right? So check it out. This is a very articulate file. You gotta spray a little bit of this foo-foo spray that gets it to reflect because it has a hard time with blacks and some other stuff. But anyways, once you have this, now you import this file into a software program that would be uh, Shaper 3D, Fusion 360, SolidWorks, that kind of stuff. Because what you got is you got a place to start because we want the parts to fit here, right? Come on, let me show you what that looks like next. Yeah, so basically what you gotta do is you gotta import this file into your software and that's what it looks like right there. And now you can start with the designing of the ideas and the criteria of actually what do you want to do? Because it has to bolt and mount up exactly to all these locations that we scanned in. All right, so let me bring you to the working model that we have right here. Let's slide the motor back into that working model that we have right now. And you can see we're working on valve covers. I haven't even showed you guys that yet. I'm gonna do some coil pack covers that are gonna integrate this design and this idea together. But what, it, what we did is Kyle and I sat down and I gave him my vision on what I was thinking and he put his creativity into it. And we built these tubes, we built, these are all separate little pieces that you mold together. Show them that, I actually lift that up a little bit so it like, looks, well, see that? So, um, did you see that? You can actually move the parts around and what you do is we can make those wider, skinnier, fatter put them at different angles and all kinds of cool things. So we just sat together and I gave him the ideas out of my head. He put his ideas into it and that was our collective work. We did that engineering project absolutely together. He did the hard part, I did the easy part. It's really cool, but once you got that file, now you gotta figure out how in the world are you gonna print it. It's too big, these printers can't print as big as that piece is. That's why I showed that thing to you when I flipped it over with the band-aids in it. That was four pieces I had to kind of glue together. Where I'm going with this thing is, this is rapid prototype, prototyping at its best. Once you got your idea and the concept, you put it in a software program that's a slicer basically, because each individual layer is actually a file that's out there. So there's different types of slicer programs. This is the one that's made by Quiddy or however you say the brand name on that one. But that is what tells the printhead what to do. Come on, let me show you actually how that works. So it's pretty cool. This thing is really more simple than you realize. That bottom plate here that you're looking at actually moves down and the printhead moves back and forth. And what's happening is the printhead is actually getting fed weed whacker wire. So there's all different types of materials depending on what you're printing of the different types of components you can use. Sometimes the door is open like this. Sometimes the door is closed like this because it's called the heated chamber. So different materials have different requirements, but there's tons of videos online. If you guys want to understand how that works, go research it. They're all over. The guys teach for free all the time. Let me show you what the print head looks like. So it's really nothing but a very sophisticated glue gun. What's happening is as it moves, it's printing down a layer. It just continues to build up that layer. And as it goes, 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 it goes. You dig it? So it's just basically, there's my 3D printer. My homemade 3D printer. <laughs>
So sometimes when you prototype something, you're never gonna actually use it in the car. You're using it as a prototyper to get it into a position where you can make it in a CNC, thermal form, whatever. But lots of times you actually make the part that you're gonna use in the car. And this is what I'm holding in my hand. This is a intake, cold air intake, part of the cold air intake for a 1971-72 A-body Chevelle. This is actually using the Corvette filter, but this stuff is all designed to actually go right under the hood if you got yourself an LS swap in there. Pretty slick, don't you think? All right, guys, being creative is something that I love to do. And at the end of each episode, I try to read out of the word of the Bible to actually share a little bit of the good word together with you guys. It's my little Bible study. So join me for that. It's always fun, it's always unique, and it's definitely a different perspective. You guys can, you guys can tell I think of things a little bit differently than most people, but the Bible is awesome. Come on, let's go do it together. All right, guys, best part of the episode is I get to share with you guys out of the Bible. Do you like the pulpit? Isn't that where the preacher goes? I'm not a preacher. I'm a hot rod guy that loves to work on cars, but I love sharing the word of God with you, and I'm looking for Romans 12. Look at, when you see a Bible all marked up, look at Murph. When you see people with a Bible, write in your Bible, read your Bible. Like, seriously, it's okay to, like, take notes in your Bible, put messages to yourself in your Bible, underline things that you like in your Bible. It's all good. All right, Romans 12, 12, 2, 12, 2. Read Romans 12, 2. I'm going to touch on a couple things. It's in my phone. I looked it up. Uh, Romans, again, is in the New Testament. It was actually written by a guy named Paul, and he's writing to the Romans. And at this point in time, he says, do not conform, Romans 12, 2. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but yet be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing and perfect will. Think about that for a second. Like renewing your mind. There's all kinds of religions out there that are like, you got to, mm, you know, focus. But I really do think you got to slow down a little bit and ask God for some help. You know, getting a Bible, having it. I'm just going to read out of here because I, I don't want to take too much time in finding it in the Bible. But listen, Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if these are the things of excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. So the reason I bring that up is like, the things that you put into your mind really affect you in a big, big way. Like, you know, there's a lot of bad stuff you can watch or you can take in or look at or whatever. Man, it stains you. It, it, it affects the way you think about things. But when you go to the Bible and you read it and you soak it in and you actually absorb it and spend some time, you know, getting to know it, asking God for some help, he puts the Holy Spirit in you and gives you a chance to understand things totally different. Jesus promised us, you know, he went to the cross and he promised us that they, he would send a counselor. That's the Holy Spirit that could be in you. All you got to do is ask him to show up. God's got a great plan for your life. And there is more to this world than meets the eye. Lord knows more to these cars than you would ever think. Anyway, subscribe, follow, like. Come with me on the journey. Next week's going to be fun. We're going to do it all over again. All right, I'll see you next week. Peace out. Good Bibles have lots of writing in it. And if you need a Bible, send me a message. Last week, I had plenty of asks. Oh, and by the way, don't forget, if you want the widget spinner, the gap tool to measure your cars, seriously, just go to our link below and click it. And, you know, it's right there. It's free. It's on me. All right, let's go play ping pong. You ready? I'm in the house.